What is up, everyone? JD here. I hope you're doing well today. We're going to be talking flashlights. Let's get into it. All right, so what we have here are what I dub as my high performance affordable to higher end lights. So the the focus works F3 is going to be the most expensive light on the table cuz it is a custom, but I also got it during the holidays on sale for just a touch over $100. So keep that in mind as we roll through this. All right? What I'm going to do is just really quickly touch on Lumentop. I really like Lumentop a lot. I feel like they offer phenomenal value for money. Um, this one here is one of the oldest lights in my inventory outside of my O lights. This is the FW3L. It is a discontinued light. I actually recommend the Ring King as an alternative to this one. It is a triple emitter, very floody, not a good throwy light. Um, it does throw. It does throw because the optics are kind of mid medium optics on here, but it is definitely more of your your throwy type of light. Got a very good glow ring in here as well. Um, this one here, I can't remember if this one's programmable. Future me, you might have to talk about that. This one on this one, but it does have a very good uh, glow ring on here that works very well. And uh, Lumatop does a really good job, like out of the box for performance. I think most of their lives, uh, bleh, most of their lights coming in around 50. Did I write this one down? Did I write this? Did I write this Lumatop down? Ring King, yeah, 49 bucks. Ring King. Uh, 14500 style sized battery, I believe, if I remember correctly. And uh, it, it has moonlight, low, medium, turbo, a thousand lumens, and strobe. You know, for 49 bucks, it's just a phenomenal light and it's a very good carry. And you All right, so this one here, I'm just going to talk about it because I want to I want to hit on the brand a little bit. This one here is from Lumen Top. This one here is the F. W3EL. It is a discontinued model, but I think the Ring King would probably be comparable, a little bit more compact in size. And I'm, I'm going to hit on this at the table, but I just wanted to run through the settings. So clicking and holding, there is a moonlight setting. Very nice. This one's much more throwy. Uh, this one's much more flood. It's a triple emitter. So we're going to half tap, go to low medium very floody high and back to low and then i think double clicking puts it on turbo so you have an extra gear there and then click to go back to low and hold the click to go off and a very beautiful lumen top does really good work with their glows i think the olight i5t is going to be really good for size reference here and we'll bring out the dapper design ion so you can get a good idea for that one um, i love this light it is a little finicky if i'm totally honest uh, we'll do the size comparison knives on uh knives lights on top and bottom but it's a little finicky i don't want to take it apart but uh, i had to take a secondary larger o-ring and set it on here because they the tolerance is so tight that if you over tighten the top it won't let the switch click <laughs> it'll keep it clicked out but it, it's really nice construction guys i love this it's a great size it's the thickest boy on the table but it is the largest to go into well at least the organizers that i own this one just came in the mail today so i don't even know if this is going to fit in here um it might be that my Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is the largest size that will go in the organizers that I like to carry in pocket. Um, a couple of these won't fill out all the way and then pin and a, and a knife in the back there. So the Rambler XL works really well with this one. I'm going to go ahead and just move this one to the side. It's not available. I do want to jump into the Rook. So the Rook is very interesting because it is a Raylite Vosteed collaboration on an existing light that is available right now through Raylight, but the Vosteed version of this one is a triple emitter medium optic light. It also has a glow ring in there, has a aluminum tail switch that has room for 
tritium insert. So it's a nice little twist. The Vostid also, I'm sorry, the uh, the Raylite also it takes the um, inserts, the tritium inserts as well. But I thought this was an interesting collab. Now, Vostid's asking $69 for these. And I think that has a little bit to do with the fact that there's the extra cost of the emitters and the optic. If you like the size of this one, though, you can get them for under 50 for a single emitter from Raylite. That's the difference between their Rook and this one here. Let's kick it down to the garage and take a look at how it performs. Okay, this is going to be the last of the in-between sizes. But this one here has been one of my favorite releases that I've picked up this year. This one is going to be the Rook. This one is a Vostid Raylite collaboration. It operates very much like a Raylite, so we're going to come into Moonlight. Very warm. We're going to half click and go into Medium. You can tell this is a very throwy light. This is a very throwy light, very warm. I know it's probably hard to tell right now. And then into its highest setting, very straightforward. There's no tap for low. And then um, I would call this the turbo setting. So this is uh, moonlight. Again, you can barely see it. This is low, medium, turbo, very bright, very, very floody. So that is your, your ray light, very nice. Um, Ray Light Vosti collaboration. Very nice construction. I, I really am liking these night lights from Ray Light. They're very, very nice. Uh, and there you go against a triple A and a double A, kind of that alternative where it's a little bit beefier than both of these. It's still for me, um, I'm putting these in the wrong spot, still fits very well in the organizer for me. Pocket clip on this one works really well. Sorry, this one's just not broken in. They're real, once they, uh, Organizers break in on these. They're really not that they don't fight at all. They go in very easily. The pocket clip works really good on this one. I haven't decided if I'm going to do anything else with this one um, because this one here, it also has a glow ring. And I really like the triple emitters. I got this one because it is a little more floody. Uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that in the daylight. It's not quite as potent as the one that comes with the lumen tops, but I think that's because the triple feet are on there. I haven't decided if I'm going to get a red one to try for that one or not, but I really like those, especially the Raylite versions that are the single emitters. Those coming in at under 50 are phenomenal value. This one's back again. It was in my more affordable lights, but that's because the aluminum version comes in at under 50. Now the titanium versions come in at around 99 bucks. You can get a Timascus tail switch. You can throw, again, a tritium insert in here. I've ordered both. And I really can't wait to customize it. This has become my favorite, which is saying something because before this, it was the Ace Beam Rider X. I loved that flashlight. I loved the performance. I loved the switch. Um, I loved everything about it. I really like this one a lot, though. This one here has really blown me away. Uh, very simple how to operate. You can program it. You can go low to high, high to low. You can change, you know, what lumens your moonlight and middle are. You can change it to that. It's only 50% on high. There's a, there's a few options here and very simple to program, very easy to follow. And there's a bunch of videos out there on it. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one cause it was in the other video, but I do like these. They're very nice options. The aluminum ones are going to outperform, I believe, a little bit because they're able to dissipate the heat a little bit better. Uh, the titanium, I think, uses aluminum to dissipate the heat on the inside. I think the aluminum constructions use copper, if I recall correctly. Actually, let's just check that real quick because if this is like that one at all, it should also. And with the aluminum, this has got... um thread uh anti-siege on the threads so it's really kind of gross yeah so you can see the copper inside of the aluminum there uh is this a proprietary i need to clean this this has got thread locker all over it i don't mind that uh at all <coughs> so this is an 18350 it says Raylite. I'm just going to check real quick because I think I have some 18350s over here from Vapesy. Um, I believe. I think these are 18350s. I'm not quite sure what I ordered those lights for, guys. No, 
That can't be right. What did I order this for? What did I order this light for? A uh, battery for? 1100 ma. 9 a.m. What did I order this battery for, y'all? It can't be for this one. It doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't fit. It doesn't make contact. I don't know what I ordered these batteries for. It can't be for the um, baton. There's no way it's for the baton. Anyway. Let's see. What was I talking about? Yeah. So I, I'm not quite sure what battery you're going to want for uh, the Ray lights. I need to do a little bit more digging on that one because I do want to have some extra ones. I know that I have these batteries back here for the, the Focusworks F3. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into that one. So the Focusworks F3 was like 120 bucks uh, during the holiday sale. It is a custom. This one here is very unique because you can click to get to the light setting that you want. And then when you find it, you turn it on. I believe you can program memory on this one. Not 100% sure that I remember. I'll, ha I'll have to go check to make sure. Uh, this one here uses a 14500 battery. You can pick your the pick your poison. Uh, the vape C really works on this one for me. Uh, maximizes the potential for this light. So I really do appreciate that. And the construction is really good. I like the powdery finish on the aluminum here. It's very nice. You got a micro milling or knurling right here on the head of the light. So that helps with gripping to get it open and closed. A very strong pocket clip. Like it's a little obnoxious. I actually have tried to bend it to loosen it a little bit to get it to function nicer or play nicer with my organizers. This one here goes in and out really nice out of the ones that are broken in. Oh, that helped. Look at that. That helped. That helped it go in and out without making it a tapper. So it just needed to really be pulled back. Let's go down to the garage and check the performance on this one out. Okay, now we're getting ready to look at my one and only custom. This is the Focusworks F3. This one here is going to take me a second, guys, because you got to click to see what setting you're in. Okay, so we're in the lowest setting. We're going to open the ion. So this one here, very, very throwy, a small amount of flooding, not a ton of flooding. So I'm just going to run through these quickly first, and then we'll bring the ion out here. Okay, cut it off. So medium, medium still feels, it's a, it's a good balance. It's white, but not too bright. It still has a touch of warmth on it. And that is, I think, as high as this one's going to go. Low, medium, yeah, low, medium, high. So that is the brightest. And you can see it does have a, a good amount of spillage, but not too floody. This is definitely a, a nice sweet spot in my opinion. All right. Uh, so that is the Focuswork F3. I think they have the F2 that looks more like the Land Apple 2 if you wanted a little bit more skinny in there. Um, but these are very comparable in my opinion as far as thickness. Um, they're nearly identical, nearly identical. This one just has a straight body, which is going to be nice if you want to be able to grip onto it. And you can see it protrudes out well for me so that I can get to that tail clicky and you can tail stand it. So I like it. It checks all the boxes. And again, I'm just leaving these out here for size reference. The last torch on the table I was kind of hoping would be something that would be very competitive for the lumen top, which... I still don't understand why this one doesn't go in. Let me grab one of my other ones real quick, guys. I'm going to grab one of my art companies that are broken in. It does look like they changed it a little bit. It looks like it has a little... Uh, maybe not. This one's probably just broken in. I'm going to take my pocket knife out of here and my pen out of here just in case. I don't want to be flinging it all over the place. Um, I feel like because it's so close to that lumen top that it should go in here, but I don't want to pop seams. It must be just a little too thick. Let me see. Yeah, it's just a little too thick. Um, so this one here is going to be one that I would want to carry independent of the other gear. It's really, really close. Oh, it's loosening. <laughs> it's loosening the cap. 
It's really, really close, though. Really, really close. Not quite there. And maybe I'll reach out uh, to our company. I know the owner. I talk to him all the time to see if he can kind of make one for me where he stitches it a little bit further over. I'll send him some pictures to see if he can just do one custom one for me. I have blue, gray, black. Um, what would look good here? Because this is not going to look good with red. I don't think it would look good with drab green. Oh, let me leave that out there. I'm carrying that today. Sorry. Um, just a quick comment down below. I like this one. You can tail stand it. Triple emitter. But this one has a really good throw to it. The switch works very good. It's like the other ace beam. It's a uh, click. Wait, double click on. Click off. Double click on. Double click on. And then... Once, hold down to cycle to the next setting. And uh, this one here gets really bright, guys. Really, really bright. Woof, I could feel the heat off there. One click off, hold for moonlight. And it's pretty low for a triple emitter moonlight. Uh, turn off, and then I think double click to go into turbo. I think that's turbo. Wait, is it double click to cut on? Okay, that's on. Hold on. On. Medium. High. Highest. Oh, yeah. Yep. Double click. Oh, maybe it's double click while on. That might be what it is. Uh, I believe this one here also has a proprietary <laughs> battery in it. Yeah, they're all proprietary, man. Uh, 3100 ma 18650. Uh, proprietary. I think this is USB C to recharge. It's really easy to get their uh, batteries, though, but I have to do some research to see, you know, would they take anything else besides their own. The aluminum version of this one, I think, is a little bit cheaper. It's a lot lighter than the titanium version. I really like this one, but again, I was looking for something that would triple emitter be very competitive with my old FW3EL, and this came really, really close. But I like the construction on this feels way higher end than what it is. It's a hundred dollar light, really well constructed. I love the look of this one, the little bit of pop of color that it has here on the body and how it skinnies down to be just a little bit bigger than the battery makes it really nice to hold. Um, I'll do individual reviews for all of these. I just wanted to kind of do like one uh, big one with all of them together. Rip my old uh, ace beam there. Uh, I'm sorry, my old lumen top. I might grab the Ring King down the road. But of all of these, I carry these the most. The Lan Apple is my favorite. The Rook is my second favorite. And the FW3, my third. What holds the FW3 back is the fact that I can't get into a very low moonlight. You have to, and you have to cycle through. I don't like cycling through. Um, when you look at the moonlights compared to one another, this one here is too bright. This one here a little bit, a uh, little bit wider than the one that comes on the LAN Apple. The low setting on here actually matches the low setting on here. Uh, the high setting matches, and I think that's it, right? Oh no, there's one more. So you can see this is more white, this is more yellow, this has a little bit more flood, this is a little bit more narrow. So I do like the FW3, um, I just don't know, I mean it is custom and maybe I can change drivers and tail switches out on it to make it more to my liking. I'd like it to operate more than like the um, Raylight and, I, and I'll take you down that path when I go down that path. But let me know if you have any questions about any of these, what your thoughts are. I know this is a very niche market. Most people are going to go out there and get themselves an i5 or an Ace Beam Rider RX because those are very nice lights for the money. But I think the Ray lights under $50 for their aluminum lineup is a strong value and really fun. Shout out to everyone out there that likes, comments, and is subscribed. I love you guys. Shout out to my members. You're getting that early access to this one. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace. Peace.